Are you interested in starting a new hobby and learning how to grow carnivorous plants? I have grown carnivorous plants for almost five years and can tell you that it is a very rewarding experience, it is not too expensive and it is definitely not too hard. And once you start growing one type of carnivorous plant, you will slowly evolve to a second one and to a third one and it will just continue to evolve from there. And it's really not hard to translate your knowledge from one plant to the next one. So, in today's video, my goal is to basically explain, explain you the very basics of carnivorous plant care, how to select your first plant, and then how to get it started. So let's start from the beginning, just talking about carnivorous plants and their specific qualities. As you can see, carnivorous plants uh, identify by having different type of bug trapping mechanisms, like pitcher-like structures, like traps, like sticky leaves. They develop these mechanisms because in nature they actually grow in very poor conditions where the soil and the water lacks almost all nutrients. So to be able to survive is that they evolve these, uh, these mechanisms and modify their leaves to capture insects that they trap and then consume and they can extract those nutrients like nitrogen, like phosphorus, uh, for them to thrive. So, because of these, uh, this kind of background information of carnivorous plants is that they have developed an intolerance to overall nutrients through the soil and through the water. So potting carnivorous plants in standard potting media that you might get use in your garden, that you might use in your standard house plants, is a big no-no. All those fertilizers and nutrients will actually end up killing your plants. Carnivorous plants actually require soil with no nutrients whatsoever. Um, this is sometimes labeled as carnivorous plant soil. There's really like a mixture of different combinations that are acceptable for these plants. There's a bunch of them of online, so you don't have to worry about like um, coming up with a recipe for soil that is suitable for them. But um, it's not too hard to find. The important thing is that you know that you cannot use the standard soil. The same thing for the water. Tap water and most bottled water will contain too many minerals. Uh, within themselves that will build up within the media of the plant and slowly start poisoning it and killing it. So for that reason is that you need to use pure water sources such as distilled water, reverse osmosis water or rain water. Rain water is, you know, is free if you can collect it, but if you're just a beginner I would say the most practical way to get, distil to get water is to get distilled water. You can easily get that in most grocery stores and it's not too expensive. It's usually like uh, in the United States, it's about like a dollar per gallon. And that is enough um, for a few weeks for if you have a single plant. So um, you have to be very careful in terms of that soil and water. And also kind of a, a tip too, is to think about the pot that you will be using for your carnivorous plant. Um, because we're talking that certain all minerals really can harm carnivorous plants then you need to find a pot that has a material that doesn't leach any type of minerals into the ground. Clay pots, terracotta pots, or even metal pots can actually add some elements into the ground, which could be harmful over time. Of course, that depends on the material, that depends on how old is the pot, so it's really hard to quantify. So my recommendation is to use plastic pots, use clay ceramic pots. Those are always safe options. Within the many different varieties of carnivorous plants that you have, I do have some specific like recommendations for them. For example, um, if you live in a tropical type of weather, uh, tropical nepenthes plants are a great fit for your climate and very easy, easy to grow in your environment. If you are a person that tends to overwater plants, Sundews are beautiful. They have these sticky leaves that fill with dew to be able to capture insects. And um, these plants are very, extremely hard to kill, even by overwatering. They actually thrive in waterlocked conditions. So you can place them in a tray with water, fill the tray with water, and keep it filled forever. And the plants will do just fine. For carnivorous plants um, that are very easy to find, you actually have the Venus flytrap. Venus flytrap is maybe the most inexpensive carnivorous plant. Sometimes you can find them for as little as four or five dollars in grocery stores. And sure, they might not be any special uh, specimen. There might be a very simple specimen, but 
for that amount of money is a great way to just get it started with a hobby. And these are some that I actually bought in the grocery store um, a couple of weeks ago and I'm just getting kind of like acclimated slowly. And I'm planning to, to repot actually later today. An interesting fact about carnivorous plants is that something that you will need to look for is really a, an environment to grow them successfully. And for them to really thrive, you need two main things. You need enough water and you need enough lighting. First, in terms of water, it really varies from a species to species. Like sand dunes are more into the waterlogged type. In fly traps, like standing in water a little bit, but not 100% of the time. Nepenthes don't really like standing in water, but they do like humid media. Uh, so you have to kind of balance between flooding the media versus uh, just humid media. But overall, it's not too hard to master. They're not as picky and they do require a substantial amount of water to stay healthy. So if you tend to just like to water your plants, carnivorous plants shouldn't be a problem for you. In terms of lighting, uh, they're not particularly tricky. They just need a lot of light. So for example, optimally for Venus flytraps, you want to provide over 10, 12 hours of direct sunlight. That'll be amazing. They'll be beautiful if you grow them outside in that amount of sunlight. Sun dews can also do great uh, with, tons of, with tons of lighting. Um, usually like the minimum for this type of plants is like four, four hours of lighting, but that's where you are in like the limit of, okay, this is where they might start being unhealthy. So you always want to strive for the higher amount of lighting rather than lower. And just always look at the leaves, uh, look at the state of the soil to see if maybe the plant is drying out too much and maybe you need to add more water or pick a different spot that is slightly less uh, intense, but it will provide enough lighting. In terms of feeding, this is kind of like a very interesting aspect of carnivorous plants. Um, they can all consume bugs. So if you're interested in feeding your plant, getting some live bugs and putting them in their traps or inside their pitchers, you can definitely do so. But um, uh, I have to tell you just a couple of things. First, it is not really a requirement. So carnivorous plants capture these insects for them to obtain some nutrients that help them grow and thrive. But those nutrients are not really a requirement. They're a bit of a boost. So the more they consume insects, maybe the more they propagate, the brighter colors they might have. But it is not um, essential for their survival. So if you don't have to worry about it, you don't have to. Also, if you grow any of these plants outdoors, they can easily capture their own insects. You don't even have to worry about it. They're actually very effective at, at, at doing this. So it's not going to be a hard one. And in most cases, it is beneficial to grow these plants outdoors because they'll have access to insects, because they'll have really good airflow, and they'll have that powerful sunlight. Technically, you can grow almost all carnivorous plants under grow lights, but that can get easily, uh, you know, very quickly, very expensive, just because they need so much, uh, so much light and they need it for so many hours a day, that just building that setup can get quite complex. So start looking in your home just for a bright location, and that's usually like the best, the best bet for you. The first time you grow really any plant tends to be the most challenging one. So for that reason, I thought it would be very helpful to have a step-by-step -step guide of how do you grow a Venus flytrap for the very first time, having no experience, and how you do this successfully. So a few months from now, your plant is still alive, thriving, looking healthy. Mm. Please like this video if you would like to support me. And of course, if you have any questions so far, drop them below and I'll make sure to answer.